Guys, the knock against Notre Dame, of course, in the passing game has been uh, good receivers. Uh, they have moved their fair share of wide receivers during the Brian Kelly era onto the NFL, but more so big body guys, possession guys, guys that will outfight a defender downfield for the football, frame him up and outfight him and go get it. But in terms of taking the top off the defense, there have been guys that we've heard about and necessarily haven't based on injury or other factors have not proven to be that guy. So do we expect with Hartman's ability to uh, move it downfield uh, uh, through the air uh, that they will be able to do that? I think so for sure. Um, like with, in particular with the passing game, what really hurt us last year was not having a, a, a quarterback that was able to do that. I mean, nothing against Tyler Buckner, nothing against Drew Pine. And as a matter of fact, Drew Pine, on a side note, I think he kind of saved our season last year because he had the, the most uh, playing experience. Um, but I would say with Hartman at the helm, throwing the ball, seeing how well he can sling it, and the kind of receivers that we have, um, one guy in particular that I have to give a special mention to that I think is going to be a big breakout star for us this year is wide receiver Tobias Merriweather. Yes. Um, he did not, he didn't, oh, I think he only got targeted in total, like what five, maybe six times last year, Ben. Yeah. And he yep. had, had the one touchdown, which was a beauty against Stanford and why exactly he wasn't getting targeted more. Maybe the quarterback play had something, something to do with it. I heard rumors that the reason he wasn't seeing more time on the field was because of his struggle at the route running with the, with route running. I don't know, but I expect him to finally take that uh, that next step this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, last last season and moving into this season, last season very banged up wide receiver core. This year, very healthy, very deep wide receiver core with Notre Dame. Obviously, uh, Deion Colsey will lead this this wide receiver core with his you know veteran leadership as he's a junior um, in this pretty young um wide receiver core obviously you know sean mentioned merriweather and merriweather's a sophomore and as we've moved through um spring ball and now you know we're here just a few weeks away we've seen kind of a special connection between freshman Jaden greathouse and sam hartman and um that is something that really really is exciting because we haven't seen phenomenal quarterback play in a long time. And we haven't seen a freshman really make an impact at Notre Dame, whether it was a Brian Kelly choice or just the guys couldn't keep up with the offense. It's been a quite a few years since we've seen a legit freshman start pretty much from day one. And it looks like Jaden Greathouse will be that guy for this wide receiver core. So, I mean, him with Colsey and Merriweather, this is a receiving core that is taking a huge step forward. And people have to remember, Colsey and Merriweather are both six foot four wide receivers. So, I mean, they're, you know, on the taller side of, of this unit. Um, and, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see. But those three dudes should make a bunch of noise with this Notre Dame offense and this passing game. Now I see that Caleb Smith was the leading receiver at Virginia tech. So I'm guessing that he moved on from one power five to another, not to ride the bench, but to have some significant playing time and targets as well. Anybody else we should be talking about at wide out. Well, actually, uh, Caleb's Caleb Smith. Um, he actually retired a uh, medically retired from football. He, he moved on from the sport in general. Okay. And so uh, myself, I saw that as a shock, but you know, shock or not, everybody has their reasons for, for doing something, you know, for making that kind of decision. Um, but yeah, I was, I was looking forward to seeing what he could do with his veteran leadership with this receiving core. But, you know, as the old saying goes in this situation, it's the next man up. Yeah. The other, the other guy to mention um, just because he's that savvy kind of crafty vet that he may not be the flashiest. He may not be the guy that can just wow you, but he is very, very good at what he does. 
um, and just an excellent college football player is Matt Salerno. He's our senior. He's a graduate student um, out of California, and he's been with Notre Dame his entire career. And he kind of has Chris Fink vibes. You know, he's not going to be the guy that, like I said, wows you, but he has crisp route running um, capabilities and he he'll outsmart you on the defense. So it'll be interesting to see how Salerno and uh, Colsey lead this offense in the 2023 season with Sam Hartman. And then, of course, the tight end has to figure into the offense. So there's no yes. way around it at Notre Dame, even though Brian Kelly's not around. The, the, the tight end has to be prominent. Now, Michael Mayer, <laughs> tough mm -hmm. to replace him. But uh, yes. does it start with Mitchell Evans? I, I think it has to. I think you have to start with Mitchell Evans. He has to take a pretty tremendous step forward. I mean, you know, you talk about huge shoes to fill. Um with mayor. I mean, those are about as big as you can, you can get into. So, but yeah, it starts with Mitchell Evans and Oh man. Um, oh. the only go ahead, Sean. Well, I was gonna say you have hold a uh, Holden stays behind him and you know, coming out of high school, there's a lot of promise with him. Um, but really a lot of our tight ends with the exception of, uh, Mitchell Evans, who had a real great, a real good game in the, uh, in the Gator bowl, um, we just, ha we just haven't seen really too many of these guys. Cause, cause I think it was Holden stays who was out with an injury last year yeah. and then Eli Reardon or Raritan, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing his name. He hasn't really seen much action on the field. So it's a, it's a very young and raw, uh, tight end core. Yeah. I mean, Mayer was very healthy his entire career at Notre Dame. So, you know, like Sean said, a lot of these guys haven't seen a ton of playing time. So there's a lot of a lot of unknowns with these guys. And I mean, when you're going off practice, there's only so far so much you can take from and so far you can go with practice. I mean, it's it's not game speed. So but yeah, it starts with Evans. And then the the other big name and when I say big name, I mean, like for leadership would be uh Charlie, Sol I cannot, I always struggle with his name. Charlie Selena. Um, he's a senior with this Notre Dame roster, but I mean, he hasn't seen a ton of playing time due to mayor. So it'll be very interesting to see the tight end position. I think that's the biggest unknown for Notre Dame because you really don't know what you're going to get with that. We've got the uh, two Irish brothers here to break down who else. And uh, you can join them, of course, here on YouTube. The two Irish brothers breaking down Notre Dame football on a regular basis. Check it out. It's worth the watch. And they will be hosting our postgame coverage of Notre Dame football here at the Voice of College Football. And don't forget, folks, week zero, Notre Dame and Navy get together and renew that long-standing rivalry and series uh, between those two, the midshipmen and the Irish across the pond.